Hey guys, so uh, it has been a pretty busy week. Uh, earlier this week we started um, working on where our vegetables are going to go. I think that's going to take a lot of work. We're still <clears throat> trying to get uh, degrub the land over there. So what we actually might be doing, so stay tuned on Tuesday for uh, Ranch Hand Tips, but we, we may actually be taking some of our uh, water troughs and turning those into planters for some of our vegetables. We also have been uh, working on a chicken coop. Um, well, it's more, it's kind of like a robust chicken tra track, chicken tractor is what they're calling those things. But, um, so I'm, I'm calling it a, a chicken actor. But like I said, this is a robust chicken actor, babe. But it's not a tractor. It's a chicken run. Meets a coop. Well, like they a called root. it a chicken so it's tractor. Like a, a root. It's a chicken root. Chicken run coop. It's a chicken actor. It's a chicken root. I'm calling it a root. What, a root? Root. A root. Like a chicken run meets coop. A root. Chicken run meets a chicken coop. It's a chicken root. Ooh. Chicken. Shauna disagrees with the name. So we've been working on that. Uh, we're trying to use different materials from around our property that uh, have been sitting around. We're no longer in need of using, so um, we figured we'd recycle them back into this uh, this chicken tractor, chicken roof. So this barn has all sorts of cool stuff in it. Uh, like she said, some of it is our junk, some of it is everybody else's junk that's left it over the years. Um, when we moved onto the property and we moved into a camper, we had to move a bunch of stuff in here all at once after we had cleaned it up and it got all messy again. But um, we still come back here. Before we throw all this stuff out, we've been going through it to figure out what we can use and what's just completely bad. So um, we're going to rummage through this and see if we can find that stuff for the chicken coop. This is my secret stash of nuts and bolts. I don't know what will work without bringing the pieces over here, though. So if you had Pull it out as an option and then grab some of that piping in case, too. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Grab that shorter one right there. Yep. And grab that other shorter one. On the top, on the right. Yep, that one. It's pretty narrow. Yep. Which is going to be a really fun project. Hopefully we'll be far enough along with that uh, later in the week, next week, that we can share with you some of the footage from that. Um, we've also been uh, working on putting together just a tour of our property so you guys can see all the different fun activities that we have going on and uh, all the projects that are gonna be coming up on our channel. So this is part of our pasture. The other side is behind you. Which you'll turn and look, part of it. Interesting little design or shape. If you'll keep walking with me, you'll see where the fencing used to be up that has since fallen down and apart. We have to completely rebuild that and make it obviously stronger. Um, if we ever plan on having bison here because we have to be able to split these pastures to uh, rotate the grazing. So, we have a lot of work to do. Um, the other problem that we've had this week with trying to get some of that work done and uh, get some of that footage out to you guys is that it's been a pretty rainy, rainy week. I think uh, Cindy is down there in the Gulf of Mexico somewhere just stirring up a ruckus, uh, which has definitely uh, been pushing a lot of moisture up our way here into North Carolina, um, which is kind of putting a damper on things when you're, when you're wanting to be outside working and getting things done. Um, so today, I actually have for you a video that I filmed a long time ago um, on s controlling snakes, and there's some pretty good information in it. It's one of my first videos, um, so I, I never really ever aired it, but uh, if you're interested in snake prevention, definitely watch this video.
couple days ago, our little beagle was bit twice in the head by a copperhead right here in this dog pen. We heard our little beagle barking funny. She sounded awkward or weird whenever we were working on the fence line. And um, I asked Charlie if he heard it, and he was like, well, I mean, kind of maybe a little bit, but she's, she gets real territorial beagle. of her food. So we thought well, maybe she's just barking at her food. But then um, she kept barking and it just sounded off. It did not sound like her. So whenever we went to go check, the whole side of her muzzle was just swell, swollen up and you could see two different bite marks below and above her eye. Um, judging from the bite size, the copperhead's teeth were about an inch apart. That's a pretty good sized copperhead, wasn't it, folks? So we're freaking out. Um, I wind up rushing her up to a emergency veterinary hospital because I think that was on a Saturday or Sunday when nobody was open. Yeah, so that created a sense of urgency um, to protect our animals and to find out what else was lurking on this property that we need to be cautious of because we're clearing land, we're going through barns, we're, I mean, we're ripping it. Um, so we just really needed to take a little bit more precaution. I immediately went from the vets to the grocery store and I was buying up a bunch of cinnamon and um, trying to think of anything else that would, I was Googling trying to find natural remedies to, to, to get rid of snakes because I was so panicked to put her back in that environment and then we had spokes out there too so I just was freaking out. I did not want that to happen again. So what we're going to do today is we're going to explore ways that we can make our property safer for our dogs, our children, and anybody else who wants to walk around freely and not have to worry about a giant copperhead biting them in the head. So the first thing we're going to look at is the habitat and make it less desirable for a snake to be in. Snakes don't like high grass, they like areas where they can hide. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to explore some products that we can put down to further deter snakes products that confuse their scent or irritate their skin so that they'll stay away. And we want to use products that are safe for our animals, safe for our kids, and strong enough that we don't have giant copperheads rolling around and biting, biting our dogs in the head. Um, in North Carolina, we have a lot of different types of poisonous snakes. We've got the copperhead, the cotton mouth, we have the diamondback rattlesnake, pygmy nose rattlesnake, and in some parts of North Carolina, we even have the coral snake. We also have a lot of snakes that are good for the environment. We have black racers, black rats, eastern king snakes. One of the things we may explore is releasing some eastern king snakes since they'll kill off the venomous vipers. But for now, in order to keep the vipers away, we're going to have to keep all the snakes away, at least from our dogs and the areas around our house where our kids are going to be playing. So let's go around and take a look at the habitat and see what needs to be fixed. Snakes will often move along through the high grass and especially along a pipeline like the bottom of our fence or along a fallen tree. Uh, that gives them protection from hawks and, and other things that may want to try and get to them. Even venomous vipers have predators. Um, they'll also look for places to hide like underneath a dog house. Right Spokes? That's why he's on top of it. So clearly we have some cleaning up to do along the exterior of our dog fence. Um, we've been mowing back here, but we hadn't come back here with the weed whacker yet because our weed whacker was broken. Clearly that created a perfect opportunity for a copperhead. There are lots of old objects that you'll find around an old farm, like this barrel that I just pulled out of these bushes. Snakes will often hide underneath the barrels for protection as well and other objects that are along your property. If that's not enough, if you look at these bushes, there's plenty of room for snakes to hide. This is another area near our dog pen. It gets a little woodsy back up in here. There's a few more objects in the woods for the snakes to hide under. Lots of tall grass, lots of camouflaging opportunities. And again, it goes back a ways. As we cruise on over this way, towards our hay fields, we've got a whole lot of high grass. Now what we're probably going to have to do is cut the grass as short as we can all the way up to the fence line, but leave the hay fields the way they are because we use those 
for our horses and to create hay for customers. Just a few more areas that are perfect opportunities for snakes to hide. I'm going to scroll around so you can see the positioning of where our dog pen was where the snake attack happened. And really probably the best habitat around here is along this ridge that goes all the way down the property line and the fence line. Where we've got about a 10 or a 15 foot fall in the land going back along a ditch with lots of trees and coverage and uh, just a lot of good areas for snakes to hide. We're not going to be able to get all of this, but that's what we're going to use some of the product for. Now that we've assessed the environment and decided that it was a perfect place for snakes to live, let's get to work on clearing it out, making it a safer place for our pets, as well as our children, and adding a little bit of product to the area to help eliminate our snake threat. So a couple of the things that we ended up doing to control snakes that actually worked. Um, number one, we used garlic powder and uh, cinnamon because the cinnamon and the garlic, um, it, well, it will irritate the snake's skin a little bit and snakes smell with their tongues. They, they scent with their tongue more than any other scents that they have. So by putting down garlic and cinnamon, you're actually really kind of confusing the snake. And if the snake is confused, it's not going to go into an area. It's going to stay out of it. Um, so garlic and cinnamon actually work very well. Um, the problem is that it starts to uh, go away when, it's, when it rains off. Now, a lot of people have used a product called Snake Away. I have also used Snake Away. And you'll when you, when you ask people about that product, a lot of them will say, well, it smells like cinnamon when you put it on your yard. Um, and that is because that is one of the ingredients of it. Um, Snake Away is basically a pellet form of uh, different things that are, are, are put into those pellets to help confuse the snake senses so that when it starts to come onto your property and it's starting to pick up on those pellets that are dissolving in your ground, um, it turns around and goes the other way because it, if it can't uh, sense what it's getting into, it, it's not dumb, it's going to turn around and go the other way. Um, that is the key really to controlling snakes. The other key to controlling snakes and uh, probably the, the absolute best way that you can control snakes is by keeping your grass cut low. You want to go down there? There's snakes. But you could have swung. I know that. I could have swung. I can't. Snakes will run after me. I know snakes can't run, but they sliver run. Like, don't have any arms. Uh, we did recently did a video on controlling wildlife in your area. It seems that keeping your grass cut uh, around your house and your living area or around your chickens, if you're trying to keep snakes away from the chickens, keeping your grass cut low in a large proximity away from those areas will uh, greatly reduce your snake population because snakes are looking for a couple things when they come in there. They want cover and uh, high grass gives them cover. I would not go walking through that field back there without some boots on right now because I can guarantee you there's some copperheads. Um, but they, they enjoy the cover. The other thing is that the cover provides a great resource for food that has, uh, if, if I went driving out there, in fact, I just cut a trail around our property the other day so we could get back there and start assessing some improvements that we're gonna be making. Um, if you, uh, in, in just driving back there in the tractor, there's field mice everywhere. And um, that is something that really attracts snakes because they feed on the, 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 the field mice, especially the venomous ones. Um, they love field mice. So by keeping your grass cut real short, you're deterring the field mice because field mice have no cover and they don't wanna be out in the open because the first thing that's gonna get them is a hawk. Um, so 
keeping your grass cut and uh, kind of keeping everything in your livable space, as we said in our other video, clean will definitely reduce your, your snake population. If you're still having a problem with those snakes coming out onto your yard or if they're going near your chicken coop, um, Snake Away works really well for yards. If you're trying to keep them away from your chicken coop, I would definitely recommend sticking maybe with the garlic and the cinnamon. I'm not sure how the chickens will react to it. We're still building our chicken coop, but it is uh, more of an organic uh, source, so it's not gonna hurt the chickens. Uh, Snake Away may have some chemicals and, and bonding agents in there uh, holding their product together that could hurt a chicken if the chicken were to try and eat it. So um, definitely, if you're trying to keep snakes away from uh, your chicken coops, uh, definitely use the more natural remedies. Um, but if you're trying to keep them out of the yard, uh, snake away is just, you know, it's a great thing unless you have free roaming chickens. Uh, um, chickens will also often attack snakes. So if you're gonna have chickens and you get a rooster, um, I've heard that roosters will attack a lot of snakes that come into the area. Roosters really kind of help protect their their resource, so um, they're not going to let the snakes get into the chickens that often. But uh, I've seen some 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 hens take out some snakes too. Um, so that's that's really kind of it. That was a pretty old video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some new content out to you next week. Like I said, we've got a lot of projects going on here, a lot of exciting things that um, are hopefully gonna turn out into something here in the next several weeks, and we'll have some great footage of our uh, chicken actor or chicken roop, whatever you guys wanna call it. We'll take a vote on that. In fact, uh, as we're building it, go ahead and let us know what you think. If we should call it the chicken actor or the chicken roop, I feel like it needs a new name because it's a lot bigger than your standard chicken tractor and it's actually going to have kind of a full coop situation in it when we're done. <laughs>